Hi, just a couple notes before I get into the video. First of all, I only realised once I got fully changed and ready that this is the exact same shirt I wore in my other Notion video. Do I have enough time and opportunity to change it? Yes. Am I going to? No. This is the outfit I thought of, I'm not changing it, so just bear with me, I'm gonna look pretty similar to the other video. Secondly, I did want to do a full Notion tour and I'm definitely going to at some point in the future, but not all of my Notion is up to the same level and I really want to make sure it looks as good as possible before I share it. So for now, I'm just gonna show you some of the pages that I've kind of been using the most frequently, which are pages I use to organize my university degree and stay on top of work. So that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. Okay, so we're gonna start with this life page. This is kind of just like a secondary homepage, but it's a bit more relevant for day-to-day -day life. Uh, this is what I use to kind of schedule out my week and my day. Let's ignore the top part, this is pretty irrelevant. I just have some short and long-term goals pages that I can go to to make sure I'm on track, get inspired, that sort of thing. Um, but what's most important here is this section where I have my weekly tasks and my daily tasks. Now the reason I have these separate is because within these weekly tasks I have things like start drafting discussion, finish discussion draft, which is so vague and if you've been watching me before you will know that this is a big no-no and you should not do this. Um, so then from there I'll break that down into more manageable tasks that are a bit more tangible so I know exactly how to do that. So for example yesterday was Thursday so within this finish discussion draft I actually had what I needed to do to accomplish this. Now this really really helps because I have my overall points that I already knew I needed to do, for example pad out my diversification implications and engagement implications, but then as you're writing an assignment often other things are flagged up and you realise oh I need to reword this or I need to add this, so then I can just add another point to my to-do list which is what I did I think with the DMSP uh, points. <laughs> and that can just really help. Make sure I'm getting the most out of that study session. And again, I have mentioned before, I like timetabling on paper. I usually put it on this little bulletin board here, but of course, when you're in the library or when you're out, I don't have access to that. But what I do have access to is my laptop where I have my Notion. So this is just a nice way to always see what I need to get done and edit it a lot easier than I can on a piece of paper. Okay, so now let's go into our assignments and how we work on those. This is probably going to look exactly the same to my other Notion video. I quite like how this page looks so I haven't edited it too much. But what we're going to focus on is this assignments table here. It is so so helpful to have all of your assignments with their own little page so you can keep all relevant resources, Q&As, marking criterias all in one place so when it comes to writing that paper or essay or whatever you know exactly how to write it really well. Especially in the case where everything's due around the same sort of time. I mean, if you just look at this table, two things were due on the same day, that was amazing. So you get the idea, it can be really helpful to have an easy way to keep on track of everything and know exactly what's expected for each assignment. So if I just go into, for example, my dissertation page, I've actually put a link to the guides for writing up every section of my research report, which is such a lifesaver, can I just say? It can be really easy to feel like university professors don't give you too much content or they really expect you to do all of it on your own. Sometimes I just think maybe it's a little hidden or you have to be proactive to find it, but it is there. So if you can set aside a day or an afternoon to look through your university's learning page. I did that and I found so much. <laughs> so it just, uh, you have to be a little proactive in the beginning, but then you can put it all into your own format in a really easy to access website like Notion that you're using hopefully every day anyway. And you can easily find out exactly what they're expecting you to include in your work. And then I have actually just copied out some of these points for the results especially I wanted to know what kind of data they want you to include 
this is just so helpful and it's stuff that you can totally still access you don't need that middleman of notion but it just makes it a lot easier for you and when you have so much work and you're stressed and you're busy making things easy is one of the best ways to stay on top of everything and stay motivated just another example if we go to my economic critical review same thing i always include the marking criteria you should always be doing this because you could write the most amazing paper it could look so good but the fact is if it's not what the marking criteria is asking for you can't get a good mark for it no matter how much the professor wants to give you a good mark because it's well written they have to go by the marking criteria so save yourself the hassle and familiarize yourself with those and also i really recommend if you have any sort of exams or tests timetabling them out separately i had two modules which had weekly tests which ended up being around 40 percent of each module so that's a massive chunk of your overall mark so they were very very important and i took them very very seriously but my goodness i'll tell you at the end of the term classes had finished i was finished i was not thinking about psycholinguistics anymore i was checked out and then it got to the next week and i was sitting in the library and i suddenly thought did i do that last quiz lo and behold i look on my notion your girl looked like this because i had not done it and i freaked out luckily i think i had a day left before the um test closed it's really helpful just to have this written down and not fall behind and miss out on a easy mark like that so yeah i recommend putting this all on the table it's so so helpful so we've talked about how to organize all your work now let's talk about actually using this work to revise so i'm going to take you into one of my module pages let's go to psycholinguistics now immediately i have my module overview which is the main learning objectives of the module when you're writing assignments this can really help to keep in mind what they're expecting you to know and demonstrate that knowledge so the way you can use all of this to revise effectively i do two separate things so firstly using these toggle functions is a great way to test your memory on certain things so the text you can see is kind of just the overall topic subheading like resonant frequency when i click the toggle it's then going to give me information on that so firstly before i look i can ask myself okay what is resonant frequency And then I can say, oh, well it's, and then I realize I don't remember, so I look. Here you can now actually test yourself, read up on what you got wrong, and so next time you test yourself, you should be a little more correct. A more effective way to remind myself of all the information first before I test myself is actually to rewrite all these notes on paper. What I do is save all my note taking in lectures to my laptop because when there's so much content and it's really fast don't stress yourself out trying to write it all down on paper there's no point to re-familiarize myself with all the content that's more active than just reading through it and checking out every 30 seconds is to rewrite it all and you won't be as rushed as you were in a lecture you can listen to music it's an enjoyable experience and it's way more effective and actually remembering the information obviously you don't need to copy everything out word for word what you want to do is understand for example i look at needs analysis this is quite an important term read over it from here i could then actually compress all of this down into two bullet points write it down in my notebook move on that's a good form of revision because by the end of it you should just be able to look at needs analysis and know exactly what it is but the starting point is needs analysis along with like six bullet points for you to know what it is obviously this doesn't mean you need to rewrite everything six times but you get the idea that you don't need to write out as much information as there is on your notion don't worry again you don't have to do this especially if your exams are still online my one will be and a great way if you're using open book is to just go to this left hand toggle again and go to quick find this will literally search within every inch of your notion into every single toggle for the word you search for. I can just type down anxiety. It's gonna bring up every single time anxiety is mentioned. And as you can see, it's actually brought up these other pages as well. So there's a couple social cultural approaches um, 
mentions. So I'm not just gonna click anxiety and go to another page. I can see exactly the context it was mentioned in. So this is also super helpful when it comes to actually taking your exam, but also if you're trying to make notes more effectively and you wanna just make a big point on anxiety, you can collate it all this way and just save yourself a bunch of time. And finally, just another random little point. I've got this resources page as well. It's super minimal, but the main point here is that I really recommend making this page and hopefully yours will have more stuff in it than mine. But the things I do have are very, very helpful and I've called on them many a time. As you can see, they're all for research methods because I struggle with statistics. I always have to bring that up apparently. This is very, very helpful. I can immediately go and know exactly how to report all this kind of data in APA format, which is so, so helpful, and exactly how APA tables should be reported. It's just really, really handy. So instead of having a really busy bookmarks bar, having it all just in a page on your Notion that you can refer to when you need to is super handy. So I do recommend doing this as well. That is how I organise my university degree and revision with Notion. Again, it's only been a few pages really, I still have a lot to work on. I use my Notion for so much, but I just want to wait until it's more visually appealing and just more organised before I show it off to you guys. In the meantime, I hope what I did show you was helpful in some way. I mean, seriously, just having one Notion page just to organise your daily tasks can make such a difference. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how pretty it looks. What matters is if it's actually helping you to get your work done. So don't feel like you need to waste time putting in GIFs and pictures. It definitely made me more motivated. That's why I did it. And it's enjoyable and it's something that I can continue doing even once I graduate. But at the end of the day, what's important is actually getting your work done and that is on you. That's not on a pretty Notion page. That is on you doing what's best for you to stay organised and on top of your work. And quite frankly, I think the takeaway from that is just making things as easy as possible for yourself. So if you can bring all of those marking criteria, assessment briefs, information you need to know for each assignment and assessment into one place, already you're in such a good place for getting work done to a high standard i promise you thank you so much for watching i hope to see you again soon and as usual happy studying